So um, with the first assessment criteria, we're looking at um, what you've learned and understood um, and what comes through in your essay about uh, the different sort of eras, uh, periods of building, potentially building styles, that kind of uh, idea of histories. And the reason it's histories, plural, is also sort of drawing attention to something that we bring up in the in the lecture course, this idea that there isn't just one kind of dominant understanding of architectural history, which did dominate for quite a long time, um, but we're trying to bring in different cultures, understandings of um, architecture and spatial design. And, um, and with theories, it's kind of thinking about the ideas, the big ideas and concepts uh, that might be driving change uh, in these different periods or that people might be exploring through their work. Um, and those ideas and concepts kind of, they can be internal to architecture, um, but they also might relate to kind of things that are happening in wider culture. So ideas of, of sort of theories of modernism uh, and change. Anna, where it says uh, architecture and spatial design, are those are, are those different things or is it one and the same? Well, I think um, different people can have different understandings, but it can be that people see architecture as, as sort of the design leading to a building or as the building itself. So the way I would read this is that architecture and spatial design is giving you that kind of wider view covering interior design, but also potentially the kind of external design, maybe the more urban moves that relate to architecture within the city as well. So it's really covering everything about how we sort of perceive architecture. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's about the relationships of those things to, to the broader cultural contexts. And you've, you've got an S again on the end of context. Yeah, so the, I suppose the idea of um, looking at architecture within its cultural contexts and um, and also calling this this whole unit cultural context rather than history of architecture is thinking about always about architecture in terms of how it relates to different times places and peoples how it's fitting into what's going on um, in the broader kind of social and political context um, and with cultural contexts i suppose it's just that that recognition of um, everybody reading, uh, reading the world, experiencing the world through different um, through different lenses based on their background, where they're coming from, uh, different times and places. Okay, and so so architecture has a relationship to those contexts, the way that people live their lives in different places and times, and and is that a kind of a two way relationship then? But, yeah, I think that's how we would see it, that, that um, the architecture is always kind of influenced by its cultural context and in, and in turn it can influence uh, the context and, and kind of is creating it as well. Okay. So now we're going to look at an example of um, an essay from a student last year. Um, and the example we're looking at here is a case study of Father's House, which is... Um, house built by the architect Ma Ching Yun um, in 2003 um, and we'll look through the essay um, pulling out how it meets uh, different elements of the assessment criteria. So if you'd like to read the essay, the whole of the essay, if you go onto your cultural context unit on my UCA, whether you're, you're studying on the interiors course or the architecture, and go into teaching materials and there'll be a folder there called essay resource where you can find a link to the, the whole of this essay to look at in a little bit more detail. So one of the first things that I notice um, picking up this essay is there's a really good positioning introduction. So the student starts the essay with a quote from the architect. So sort of seeing the architect in terms of what their key ideas are. And then in this first paragraph that we've highlighted, um, they're making the point um, that the architect is very influential in their home country of China, um, and then drawing attention to some of the, the key ideas and approaches um, that are particular to this project, and linking that to the, the cultural context uh, and the geographic context um, of the of the house itself 
Um, so looking at how it's uh, received by the people that live there, how it relates to the construction uh, techniques of the area. Um, and in the, in the last sentence of the, um, of the first paragraph, the student sets out the way that they're going to be addressing the case study, um, particularly emphasising the fact that they're going to be looking at the building in terms of a vernacular uh, structure, uh, and the materiality and the layout and the site orientation. So they're already setting up for us what are the, some of the key ideas that they're going to use to structure uh, their essay and um, what are the things that they think are most important about this house. In the second paragraph of the introduction, um, the student sort of looks broader, positions the house in terms of the period when it was designed and constructed and um, looks at what else was happening in, uh, in the country at that time. So they start to refer to the um, economic context um, and give a bit of the more sort of general history of what's going on in China. So they're positioning um, the, the building and also the ideas that they're looking at um, within that broader context. So would you say that it's a good idea to um, deal with the cultural context within the introduction? Um, well, I think it's it's good to introduce it there, but what works really well in this essay is the way that that, uh, that kind of introduction of the context then follows through in the subsequent sections. So, for example, the first um, theme that the student uses to, to analyse the house is um, the theme of sheltering, um, which in, uh, in the lecture series we talk about vernacular architecture, and the student here uses a quote to define vernacular architecture as the social, economic, cultural and technological aspects of architecture um, and how buildings emerge and are sustained through cultural processes. So it's kind of taking that that big view of, um, of vernacular architecture, which kind of emerges from a place and is part of the culture of that place. Um, and then they, they use that idea to, uh, to look at the way that um, the building was constructed. So uh, one of the interesting things about this house is that the architect who um, trained in the US but originally came from China um, in this house goes back to using local labour and local techniques um, in this village context um, using um, labourers who are friends of his father who is the client so um, the, the design of the house is very much influenced by the available materials and the available um, kind of knowledges of building as well um, and the students drawing attention to that, but also contrasting it with the fact that this is happening during a period of change and globalisation in China. So, so the architect's kind of going against the trend. So, the, again, that, that's relating it to its cultural context. And in some ways, what we said earlier, that it's, um, you don't have to argue that it... Uh, fits completely within its cultural context yeah, yeah that, that you can sort of argue it on different levels i suppose um and uh, and and also look at how something can fit within its cultural context or use elements or contribute to its cultural context but at the same time um be be going in a different direction mm. another example of where the uh student with this essay uh is bringing together the understanding of cultural contexts with histories and theories is in the section on structuring where they're talking about um, how materials are used in the case study house um, and sort of where they're sourced the fact that they're um, very sourced from very close by to the property um, and this can be seen to be sort of appropriate um, for this building and they um, they draw a parallel with another building by the same architect um, constructed in california um, and how the use of different materials in that context were culturally appropriate. Um, so I think this is really good because it's, it's kind of drawing attention to a set of understandings around materiality, so um, theories um, around why we use different materials and the fact that it might not just be what's immediately available or what's easiest to build with or what's cheapest, but there might be different reasons for choosing uh, different materials in different contexts um, and by looking at another building by the same architect 
it's sort of showing the work in this wider context, recognising that um, the architect's knowledge is changing with each building that they do um, and that they're able to sort of learn skills and then translate them to a different context. Um, when they're talking about ordering and the way that the, the spaces of the house are laid out, um, the, the student in this essay draws a comparison uh, between this contemporary Chinese house and traditional approaches to um, construction and design in China. Um, as we've highlighted here, a quote um, where they look at the traditional courtyard house model um, and and what they're, they're sort of questioning is how much does um, the architect here follow those traditions and how much do they sort of stray away from them. The problem here is that when you're talking about um, how the building's laid out and these kind of ideas of symmetry, axiality, um, enclosure, it's very difficult to picture that without actually seeing um, a drawing of how the building is laid out. So it'd be really useful here to have um, a plan represented uh, next to the next to the text, ideally. In the technical and applied skills uh, video, which will be the, the final one of, of, of this series, we're going to show you how the student could have um, carried out some further research in books in the library and in journals. But we, we've managed to do that and, and find some plans and additional information on the house. Yeah, so as you can see here, um, in the sort of specialist book on house design from the library, um, usually in specialist architectural publications uh, and particularly in journal articles, you'll always get the, um, the plans and sometimes sections and other drawings of the building uh, reproduced next to the text about them. Um, and here, the, as you can see on the bottom right, there's a plan of the building and they've labelled it to show what the different spaces are. Um, and this is something that um, as you're learning in your studio work um, to read plans and to draw plans, um, you'll find it easier and easier to be able to look at these drawings and start to understand the way the building's laid out. Um, and in this case, it really sort of relates back to the points that the student was making about ordering, about whether the plan is symmetrical, about how you experience the different spaces and the enclosure of the building, how it relates to its context. So being able to get hold of um, good quality, accurate plans uh, in this way and then reproduce them and use them to sort of back up the points you're making in your essay uh, is a really good point to take from this.